Welcome to this edition of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, constructing a NEMA standoff mount. Uh, in this case, um, the original intent of this design was for a CNC router. So the idea is, is we would mount the um, the NEMA motor on here it would pass through this opening into the machine and this would create a rigid standoff and the coupler would go in this this opening that we see uh, here so um, I want to take some a quick look at the code first too and, and talk about some of the variables I used in the ideas because uh, uh, in sort of part two of this video one of the things I'm going to do is make a customizer out of this so one of the things when we look over here at the um, at the variables we've set up because this is parametric is we set up hole separation so that's going to be the distance between these holes over here in, in the square and um, as you see one of the things I made it handy is I put the NEMA specifications up here and this will also hold true when I transport it over to customizer code in, in uh, Thingiverse so kind of an interesting little hint is uh, you know put in you know if there's going to be standard variables put those into your comments and then that way you don't have to go searching and also as I create other mounts in the future I don't have to go looking oh what was what was a NEMA 11 versus a NEMA 14 I'll have all that information here uh, the second piece is stanchion height so how how tall should these stanchions be and so again we can set those and that's going to be determined by our machine or whatever we're making uh, stanchion diameter so how much meat do we want to put on these stanchions and so that's defined by uh, this variable here and then bolt diameter so again one of the things that I did is I put in the NEMA bolt dimension so again all you simply have to do is come back here take a look at this and then boom you know you have your bolt diameters without a lot of searching uh, the diameter of the main hole so how big is this opening going to be and I've also put some logic in here so if you shrink up uh, obviously these pieces up here so say for example hole separation where if you're going to do say a NEMA 11 and you have a 30 millimeter opening then you know it, it, it basically adjusts it down automatically so there's a little bit of intelligence in here and then uh, plate height so how thick is this how thick is the plate now one of the things that I do want to do want to point out is the stanchion height is the absolute height and, and I'll show this in a minute however the, the stanchion itself goes all the way to the bottom of this base so the base simply rises up the stanchion so your your the height you select uh, and stanchion height is going to be your absolute height of this and it's just how much rigidity do you want to add to the plate um, and I typically find that that four millimeters is, is, is plenty um, you can dial it down up or down and the idea is is this doesn't provide too much except a rigid structure in which to kind of hold all these straight because the the torsion is actually held by the motor pushing forward on on these bolts so do want to do want to uh, pop by so one of the things that I do want to do is do want to do is that proper English well I think maybe for a four-year-old however one of the things that I do want want to show is so I use a couple overlapping cubes here to actually create uh, this so let's let's do a uh, quick uh, percent sign so you can kind of see how it all works so I've got the circles to create the rounded corners uh, or the cylinders circles cylinders uh, to create the rounded corners and you see how I bring it together with this and so now what I want to do is also bring in a um, circle and so you can see because I wanted to show you can see the stanchion goes all the way to the bottom of this um, so as, as we've kind of grayed out one of the corner circles you see the stanchion height now another piece that that I've added here is these knockouts so one of the reasons for these knockouts versus having a solid wall is if you need to get in here with an allen key or something to undo the coupler it gives you plenty of room plus it makes it uh, pretty rigid because 
because of these structures right in here uh, really add a lot of beef to the um, uh, stanchions and so if we go down here we create support what what you see in this section under create support is that we're um, let's do a you can kind of see we, we have we've put in a, a square or cube in this area and you notice the counter you know so what we're doing down here is we actually have um, uh, let's see taper supports so let's go ahead and take a look at this tapered support real quick by showing this out so you kind of see we have this now this 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 guy kind of scales you can kind of see some of the math here uh, whole separation divided by three plus plate height and so what we want to do is we want to keep this guy where his bottom is his bottom right here if you see is at the top of the plate height and then he takes out because one of the things is we scale this it gets kind of odd because if we um, go back up here so we have this and, and I've actually printed this out and I'm going to show you it, it, it printing out and everything uh, I've done this for NEMA 23 but let's say we do a NEMA 14 at 26 and then so we hit this we scale this down so now you notice that this guy uh, we start running short and also the stanchion thickness we have to knock down some of the stanchion thickness now um, probably before I put it up on Thingiverse but not before I post it on the website I might add a little bit more logic to knock down some of the stanchion di diameters so if we say stanchion diameter is now say 8 and then uh, for a NEMA 14 we see that the uh, instead of 5.5 like it is for 23 it's 3 so we change that and then we hit that and then you see it starts to make a whole lot more sense once again uh, in the structure so uh, uh, because one of the things we we have done okay no no notice that this hole down here I've scaled this hole down a little bit uh, because if you notice I have an if main opening is greater than hole separation uh, then go ahead and do it otherwise uh, what we do is we scale this back uh, down here in this one so using the else statement and you could also do that for the um, uh, uh, stanchion thickness you know however one of the pieces is is um, you know how much do you want to add to to your overhead code and it's good to have some error checking you know so you don't have a catastrophic failure if you will in the design but um, it, I guess it depends on really how much um, intelligence you want to build into this versus how much code so anyways just kind of give you an overview so that's pretty much the overview of this it's a rather interesting part and I think a rather handy part I do a lot with um, NEMA motors and, and you know stepper motors in general and so this this was a unique uh, little tool to help uh, build step 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 offs set offs I'll spit that out here it's early in the morning so create set offs for these motors and again you can bring this into other projects too um, if, if you want to use the object because it is a model it's create plate as you see here so uh, here's here's the model you could uh, in, in a future version I may actually have it pass all these variables directly via the module uh, to the module itself so in other words you can call it another program without having to have these defined uh, in, separately in the program simply you just pass it to the module um, may do a video on that too showing how that's to be done but for right now you kind of get the idea and this also works very good because my my goal is to send this up to Thingiverse as a customizer and that's actually going to be the next video in the series so I tell you what let's go over to the printer let's watch a quick time lapse that is being printed and then after the time lapse what we'll do is we'll take a quick look at it and um, talk about the end product so let's cut over to the time lapse
so uh, you saw um, time lapse of these printing. We looked at them in the computer on, on uh, uh, in OpenSCAD, and now you see them in real life. So uh, this one is a little bit longer than these, and so. Uh, Anyways, that's where the customizer really came in handy, so I didn't have to redesign this piece for this piece for this piece, and actually this one's a little bit different, can't see it, but I had a knockout for a bolt here and a bolt down there, so it's got um, uh, you know a little bit of knockout. So anyways, this is what's really neat about OpenSCAD, is again, you can take some math, apply it, some geometry, and, and create parts, and you can make them parametric so the parts scale. So, um, as always, Links to the code will be down below. Uh, I'm going to do a video, probably the next one in the series, where I turn this into a customizer. And I'll do a video on how you create a customizer on Thingiverse. So, uh, hey, if you found this handy, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. A lot more OpenSCAD stuff coming. Cheers.